Oh, hi, this is Scott from Paper Moon, and today we're just going to talk about Romanza. We'll talk about um, some technique issues in the right and left hand, and then we'll play through it a few times, um, parts one and two. Um, this is an anonymous ballad, uh, very va famous. It's, you'd be hard-pressed to find any classical guitarist who doesn't know this song, or e even fingerstyle guitar. So whether you have a, an electric guitar, steel string acoustic, or you're playing classical on a nylon string, this song is a must play. It's a very nice piece, pretty simple, and it's definitely one of those uh, songs that is totally doable if somebody asks you at a cocktail party to play something for them, as opposed to strumming chords or whatever. It's got the melody and the chord and the harmony all together in one nice easy, easy piece. So let's just talk about the right hand. It's a continuous pattern all the way through. It's going to be, and so by the way, the song's a waltz, so we're only counting to three. Your ring finger is, you can we can count using the ring finger, so we're going to go ring, middle, index, the whole, that's the entire thing with the right hand, except for the thumb. The entire piece is ring, middle, index, ring, middle, index. So count on the ring finger, that's your one. So we're going to go one, two, three, and then count, and then you're done counting. One. By the way, plant, if you can plant, that's what we've talked about that in other videos and we'll continue to talk about that, but I'm going to play with the ring finger and sit on the next string as quickly as you can, even if you're not playing fast, and um, here I'm going to play the middle finger. Immediately I'm playing the thumb, uh, index, sorry. As soon as I play the index, I'm back to the ring. The next finger should always be getting ready and to play and already be where it needs to be. Um, okay, so the pattern is... A, M, I, A, M, I. Now we're going to add the thumb on every beat, okay? So if your ring finger is playing on every number, uh, one, two, three, we want the thumb to be playing on every one. So we're going to go one, two, three, one, two, three. So your thumb, it plays the first beat of every measure. Now you can do a free stroke with the thumb if you like. And notice I'm doing free strokes with the other fingers, and that you should do it that way. Um, we can do a free a rest stroke with the with the um, the ring finger, but I would uh, suggest not doing that for a long time until you're comfortable with the piece, and then you can throw that in on every beat or the or the first beat of every measure. But that's kind of difficult, so let's not do that. But with the thumb, free strokes are okay. But if you're a beginner, chances are your hand's gonna it's gonna be floating out in the places where we don't want it. So if you can do a rest stroke with your thumb, it's gonna keep your hand in place and ensure that that you're in the proper position, probably hopefully. So if you do a rest stroke with a thumb, and don't put your arm into it, it's just the thumb, drop the thumb. If you can comfortably do a rest stroke with a thumb, your chances are you're in the right position. Okay. Um, now this is kind of tricky though to play a thumb rest stroke and a free stroke with the ring finger at the same time, that's not easy. Um, it's a simple idea, but for some reason, people have trouble with it. So we're gonna do a, a free stroke with the ring finger and a rest stroke with the thumb at the same time. Like that. If you have trouble with that, um, work on that, you know, by itself. If that's a deal breaker for you, you can all you can play the whole piece with a, with a thumb free stroke and that's okay. But I suggest this. Um, but if you do have trouble with that, a good way to work through it is to play the thumb and then immediately play the ring finger. So you're not playing them at the same time. It'll be thumb a little bit early. And now do the opposite. Do the ring finger first and then quickly the thumb stroke. And if you can do enough of that back and forth, eventually they'll meet and you'll be able to play them exactly at the same time. So what we're shooting for is this. the entire song is just that pattern. Uh, at the end of both sections, A and B, your thumb will play the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth string, but that's not, that's pretty easy, so. So we'll see that at the end, okay. Um, so for the left hand, uh, efficiency is just the only thing to talk about here. Um, we, you can download the tab uh, on the website, but we don't have left hand fingerings because it's really up to you how you want to do that, but I, Again, we'll suggest your ring finger on the first note. We're talking about the A section here. Ring, index, 
And then when you go down to the third fret, I played an extra note there um, on accident. Middle finger on the third fret. That way you're only going to move once. So if you go ring finger on the seventh, index, because you're already there. Now your middle finger on the third fret, and you only moved once, as opposed to going, you know, middle finger, let's say, and going, and then having to move, and then move again, and then move again. That's a lot of moving. So if we do it this way, middle finger, now I'm in position, I only moved once. Now here, let's try the middle finger there, slide it up to the seventh, because we have to, and then pinky on the twelfth fret. Um, it's important to play your pinky here, especially the next three notes that you're in position for this half bar. Notice that the thumb, the bass note changes that. The hardest part of this song is the full, is this full bar. Right? So we have to have pressure, not on every string, we need pressure on these two and the sixth string. That's all we need. So don't worry about if your finger is not completely straight. If we have pressure over the outer strings and the second one, we're good because this D sharp note isn't going to come off. So we really don't need that much pressure over these three strings. So that's um, something that's often uh, overlooked uh, with, when it comes to bars. You might not need to have pressure over the entire finger. And I know it can hurt sometimes. If you have trouble with this full bar, um, at, uh, at first we can just play a half bar and, and just not play the bass note just to help you get through the song. If maybe if you're going to play it for some for someone, perform it maybe. But, um, a full bar is what, what we're shooting for. And if you're a beginner, again, and you've, and this, you've just started on this piece, this is going to be tough and it might sound like like this, but that's okay. Don't get, don't get stuck on it. Just play through it, assuming that you're playing the right notes. Because when you practice a lot on this, you're going to be spending way too much time on that bar and it's going to hurt. So if you play it more often, you'll get better every time, hopefully. Okay, when you're coming out of this bar, your ring finger is going to take up, take over because it's the closest finger that's not being used. And in fact, and in fact, this next measure in the piece is the same as the as the second measure from the beginning. Okay, we're heading down here now. At the end of the of of first part of Romanza, you'll see people play play it like this. I like I like to do that. It makes uh, makes sense. But you can also play a full B seven. In which case we don't have to move, really move anything but the pinky. So we're going, uh, and it has its own challenges there, but we're going. Just slide the pinky up. You don't have to take it off the pressure off the string. Just slide it up, and then slide it back. And here your thumb is going to play on that previous measure that I just played. This string. So we're set up here. Now we're playing E minor. You don't have to take this middle finger off on E minor if you if you can keep from it. I'm going to quickly run through part two, but another thing uh, that you can do on Romance is to play variations. Um, rather than playing this arpeggio pattern, we can play block chords and we can play tremolo. Tremolo is harder to do, but block chords are quite easy. So here's here's your arpeggio pattern for that we've been doing. So every beat is divided into three, remember? One, two, three. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet. Well, instead of doing that arpeggio, just play them all at once. One. three strokes here and a rest stroke with a thumb at the same time. Thumb is still playing on the first beat. One, two, three, one, two, three. That's kind of a nice variation to do when you repeat the piece, kind of make the piece last longer. Tremolo, a little bit harder to do for sure. Remember, classical tremolo is P A M I, and we have to keep the bass going like this. Um, this is for the tremolo variation of Romanza. One and two and three and one, two, three. Your thumb really has to jump around for this. It's going sixth string, third, second, third, second, third, and then on top, in between every thumb stroke, A M I. So that'll sound like this. So that's how that's going to 
there you go. Okay, the second part uh, uh, goes to the key of E major. It's a little bit harder than the first part, but not, it's not too bad. A couple more bars in there. So we start out like this. Again, the same right hand pattern, and we can do all those variations that we did on part one, on part two, but I'm going to stick to the arpeggios now. On the second, the third measure of it, we're going to make this be your guide finger index, just going to slide it up, and then we play uh, ring finger on an F sharp on the fourth string and pinky on E. In some editions of arrangements of this, you'll see a bar here, but there's no reason to bar. We're going to do A in the, a in the bass. Uh, this is a B7 chord, and A is the, the minor, the seventh in that chord, so it's just an inversion of B7. And we've got... Okay, now we go to a bar, just like part one, except we've got C sharp up here rather than C natural, so in some ways it's more comfortable than the first part. Um, we don't have to cram our finger in there, just like this. On this part, think about a guide finger for this. Take all your fingers off. You can still take the pressure off, but I've still got contact with the string, with the middle finger. I'm sliding it up. This is so, if you take all your fingers off, you can get lost and you can overshoot things. But if you use, if you keep a little bit of contact with the string, um, then that can be problematic on a bass string because of the squeak. But certainly on, a, on, a nylon on the nylon strings, the trebles, it's easier to do. Okay, so we've got this bar. I'm taking the pressure off of this, this, but I'm not losing the middle finger, but I'm not losing contact with the string, sliding it up, and I've got frets 9, 9, 9. So that trend, makes the transition a lot easier. To another half bar here, just like in part one, we have a half bar on the fifth position. Now we've got it in the ninth position, same thing, except E's in the bass. Now, here, I think this is the hardest part in the whole song to get that right on time. Uh, it should sound like this. So just to practice this, we're coming from here. This is the very last thing that you'll do before that. Try to quickly get your pinky to the ninth fret and play the A string at the same time. Don't get this. Don't have this set up yet, um, because what what I see a lot of students do, they want to get everything all down at first, and then they go and you already you're already way have wasted a bunch of time at that point. So we're going. Just worry about that at first, and then uh, we're still on our way to putting these down. You have another option here. Sometimes I like to go and do a full bar right here. It's easier maybe to get to the next section. But you don't have to do that. We can do a half bar. It's up to you. I like the, I like the full bar. Because the next part, we're, we've got another bar. This is our last bar on the second fret. You can bar all of them or just five out of six strings. Um, whatever is makes the notes clearer for you. Okay, then we move to an E chord at the end. This is just like part one, but a major chord version. Some people find this pinky stretch to be pretty difficult. Um, so here's another option. We can, we can just play a piece of the chord. Keep that G sharp the entire time. And then put all those fingers back. Usually you'll hear the song played um, in A, A, B, B, A form. So we'll play this first section twice, second section twice, and then back to the first section once. But that's by no means set in stone. You can do it however you like. Um, so again, this is a great a great piece. For, it's like a consider it a study for the right hand, and a re really nice one to to play for people if um, if they ask you to play something. You know, it's not it doesn't sound like a study, and it's a famous piece.